This is the new Mercedes G-Class and it's a little bit like retro suite in the way that it looks a little bit old fashioned on the outside, but on the inside, it is indeed new. For instance, when I was a kid, these weren't called candy sticks. Instead, they were called sweet cigarettes and they even had a little red tip on. So you could pretend you were like your dad, you know, chuffing on a fag. Now, if you're American, that phrase will mean something completely different than if you're British. So this car, it looks like the original G-Class, which was actually first released in 1979. So you've got the indicators on the top of the wings. You've got that slab sided body. You've got a big spare wheel on the back of the car. And look at this. You've got exposed hinges and old fashioned door handles. The first thing to note about this G-Class is that it's a very tall car. So it's a bit of a shame that it doesn't have a grab handle there like some other SUVs to help you get in because you have to kind of haul yourself up like that using the wheel. Thankfully, there is a grab handle like in the old G-Wagon for your passenger and they'll probably need that to give them something to hold onto when you go off-roading. No more on that later. So like I was saying, this car's got a retro exterior design, but here on the inside, it's completely modern. And the interior is dominated by these two huge digital screens. So the one for the driver on this G63, which is standard by the way on this particular car, you can swipe through different menus and views. You can even change the look between sport, classic, and something called progressive. I think I'll stick with the sport. I can also control the main infotainment functions through this system as well, or through the big screen here, though I operate that using the left sided button and yeah, you can swipe through all the different menus. It's all very easy to do. Or I can use this swivel wheel down here and the touchpad to input stuff, but that's not so easy to do because the layout's a bit awkward to operate. And there are of course voice commands as well if you want to use those instead. It's a little bit of a shame that it doesn't have Mercedes latest MBUX operating system because that is really good. You get it in the A-Class, but you don't get it in this. You do have Android Auto, and Apple CarPlay as standard, and it's that easy to use. You just plug in your phone and it comes up. The only problem is, is that you then don't get the full screen. You only get part of the screen. The rest of it is just like blank with Android Auto written on it. Also, I've noticed with this particular car that it sometimes just randomly disconnects. You have to reconnect it. Or when you listen to Spotify, it sometimes just clips the track. So it's like it just loses connection for a split second, which is a little bit annoying. I'll tell you something else that's a little bit annoying as well. Your cable for this, which leads into the central cubby, there's no actual place for you to thread it through. You can, I suppose, squeeze it through there, but it's like Mercedes haven't really thought about that particularly. Oh dear. It's a shame as well because the cub is actually a decent size. Look, you can store lots of different things in there. The glove box, that's reasonable as well. There's some little coin holders there, though the type of people who are going to drive this car more like to put the sovereigns for their rings in there. Other cubby space are pretty good. Look, door bins, I can fit one, two, and three bottles in there and generally actually the quality in this car is really really nice if you have a look around it just feels high class so you've got metallic switches here for the climate control i've got an iwc clock down here you've got metallic trim about the place it feels very nice as do the solid metal paddle shifters for the automatic gearbox i like the wood trim effect on this car as well however there are a few pieces that just let the side down a touch the window switches they're cheap plastic Whereas in the S-Class, which is a less expensive vehicle, they're metallic. Also, look at this. The sun visor is like something out of a, a 15,000 pound car, not a 150 grand car. And then look at the cheap plastic here. That's awful. What were they thinking about fitting that there? But then the rest of it is lovely. And you get Nappa leather as standard, though these are the uprated Nappa leather seats with quilted effect and extended leather throughout the cabin. So you get leather up here on the dash, you get it all the way down here, you get these quilted inserts there. There's leather even down here on the lower part of the door. It's, it's lovely, but that upgrade does cost a lot. It's £5,000. And one option I wouldn't spend extra on on this car is the AMG driver's package because what it does is increase the car's top speed from 137 miles an hour to just 149 but it costs £2,000 and actually you don't really need to spend on any options because this car is so well equipped for instance as standard you get adaptive LED headlights you get 20 inch alloy wheels you get adjustable suspension you also get heated and cooled front seats whether you want a hot ass or a cold bot you can decide you also get a 360 degree camera and a glass sunroof. 
One option you may want though is adjustable lumbar support for your back because it doesn't come as standard, which is a little bit odd on a car of this kind of price, especially when you get things like electric steering column. There is absolutely loads of adjustment in it. In fact, this new G-Class is actually longer, wider and taller than the old one. It means there's loads more space here in the front and even if you're small, you can really jack up the seat to get a good view out. And there's still plenty of headroom. If you're really tall, you can go lower, but What's it like in the back? Because the old car was absolutely terrible. Well, one thing I will point out is the fact that the rear doors don't open all that wide, so it can be a bit awkward when you first like trying to maneuver a child seat in. Thankfully though, the Isofix points are really easy to get out. Look, they're exposed, so that's no problem. It's more of a problem, once again, is getting in because you really have to step up. Right, as you can see though, once you're in, Oh my gosh, look, loads of headroom. You can be well over six foot tall, you'll be fine. Knee room is decent as well. Now you can stretch your feet out some way, but then there's like a thing underneath the front seat that you can't go any further, so that's it. It's not fully like a limousine in the back, but it's comfy enough. And I can't complain about this, look, huge rear windows, the ledge is low, so kids will be able to see out very easily. Also, there's big windows just behind you, which help make it feel like an air in here, despite all the black trim of this particular car. Makes you think that this is gonna be a seven-seater, but no, it's not, it's a strict five-seater. Now, if you wanna carry five at once, it's doable because this car is so wide. Yes, the middle seat is a little bit harder and raised up than the outer two, but the floor's pretty flat. There's loads of room for everyone's feet. Yeah, you can carry three people in the back here, no problem at all. And you know, people can keep comfortable as well because you've got your own climate control back here. There's also some air vents here in this pillar to blow cool or hot air on your face, depending on what you want. There's some other features down here. Look, you've got a charging point there, a 12 volt socket. There's a little, I don't know, I suppose that's an ashtray or maybe you can leave your candy sticks in there. In terms of other storage, well, you have some airplane style pockets on the back of the front seat. So they do feel a little bit flimsy. You've got some big door bins down here. Once again, more than enough space for a small bottle such as this. And there's some other creature comforts as well. For instance, look, I've got heated rear seats here and the quality back here, you know, it's the same as in the front. You don't feel like you're in the cheap seats. Now, if you want to, you can carry longer items because you can fold down this hatch, open this door, and then you can carry skis and two people either side if that's what you want to do. There's also some cup holders there, as you can see. Now, if you want to carry items in the boot and you need a bit more space, you can ask your rear passengers to sit more upright because it does increase the load capacity, but people are really going to want to travel like that, aren't they? And really, if you're carrying really large items, you're going to need to fold these seats down. And to do it, it's a two-stage process which is a bit of a faff these days but these seat backs they do lie flat the problem is that you have this huge ridge here now it's gonna make it really hard to push heavy items right to the front of the car now let's talk about the actual boot space so this door opens sideways so it's really awkward to do in tight spaces also it's really heavy because you've got that spare wheel on the back Look at this thing, you've got the quilting here. That's really nice. Now, what's not so nice though is the fact that you really do have to kind of lift things up quite a way to get them into this boot because unlike a Range Rover, there's no air suspension, so you can't lower the car down to make that easier. Also, the tow hitch, it's fixed. It's not retractable once again, like it's retractable on a Range Rover, though it can still tow the same. 3.5 tons this car, so that's pretty good. What's also pretty good is the fact there's no low lip. So once you've got things up here, they're easy enough to slide in and there's various tether points around the place. You've got a 12 volt socket here as well. You've also got a boot liner there to keep it nice and clean so you don't dirty the carpet. Unfortunately, under there, there's no extra storage, which is annoying because really you could do with somewhere to put the removable parcel shelf. So no, it's just gonna have to kind of lay like that. <laughs> no, let's move it out so you can see what's going on because I want to show you the boot size. Yeah, it's very big, but it's not quite as big as a Porsche Cayenne's. And you might be wondering what the heck this bag is. Well, I'll show you more on that later in the video because the last thing I want to point out is this. There's no actual guttering around the roof. So when it's raining, that can get filled up with water. Then you're leaning in and all of a sudden it just drips down your neck and that makes you mad. Speaking about stuff which might get on your nerves about the G-Class, here's five other annoying things. Normally, when your reversing sensors start to flatline like that, you've still got about a foot's leeway. But it seems that Mercedes haven't recalibrated the ones for this car to account for the spare wheel on the back, because as you can see, it's pushed 
right into the prickly bushes. When the central locking engages, it sounds a little bit like a gun going off, which could prove a bit dangerous when you consider that some of the people who might buy this car probably also carry guns and you might startle them. These running boards are handy when getting into the car, but when you get out, you end up rubbing the backs of your trousers on them. And if you're at the rear of the car, the side mounted exhaust as well. And then you just, yeah, you're just filthy. In this bag here, you have some netting, which you can attach to the inside of the car to maybe keep your dog separate from the interior of the cabin. But as you can see, it's, it's all a bit of a faff. It's easy to get tangled and it's even harder to fit and to put away. So I think I'll leave that there for the Mercedes delivery driver to deal with. These doors are so heavy and hard to shut properly that your friends will never be able to do it. So you'll have to say, just give it a jolly good slam. Thankfully, this car has plenty of cool features to help make up for all this. Here's five. Like the old G-Class, this one uses a ladder frame chassis and it's a bit like this chocolate bar where you have like a tough lower section which the wheels and everything are attached to and the body is placed on top. That would be the new car in this case. It also has a rigid axle rear suspension like the old car for better off-road travel. Yet at the front, it gets modern double wishbone suspension for improved comfort. You also have a modern rack and pinion steering system whereas the old car had some recirculating ball type which was just really, really bad. And yeah, all these improvements means it's tough off-road but also much better on-road. The bonnet, wings, doors and tailgate are all made out of aluminium to help keep the weight down. Though this thing still does weigh over 2.5 tonnes. As well as a low range mode for the gearbox, you've also got a front, central and rear differential for superior off-road grip. This G-Class has a ground clearance of 25 centimetres, a weighting depth of 70 centimetres and an approach and departure angle of over 30 degrees. This G63 has a hand-built twin-turbo 4-litre V8 with 585 horsepower and 850 newton metres of torque and it can go from 0 to 60 in just 4.5 seconds. Sounds pretty cool as well. Performance from this big thing is incredible. I timed it from 0 to 60 miles an hour in just 4.3 seconds. That's quicker than a Range Rover Sport SVR. Flooring the throttle in this thing. It's like a dragster on stilts. The bonnet rises almost like a powerboat and then it just buggers off down the road like a bull mastiff that's just spotted a cat and it drags you along behind it by the leash whether you like it or not. Thankfully though, it does have the agility to cope with its performance, unlike the old G63, which was a bit like piloting a jet-powered jelly down the road, because if you made a sudden import, then it would throw a complete wobbly and get confused and wouldn't know what to do. Whereas this one doesn't, so if you need to brake to avoid hitting something, it will stop. If you need to steer around an obstacle, it will respond and change direction. The steering just works like that in a normal car and it feels like it too, rather than just being something to hold on to. Of course, if you go into a corner too quickly, this thing will start to run wide, but considering it weighs about as much as a fully grown white male rhinoceros, it handles pretty well. Now you can put it into different modes with a drive select button and put it into sports if you want to, and that will do things like sharpen the throttle response. It will make the engine sound a little bit more angry. It will also sharpen the shifts from the excellent nine speed automatic gearbox, but it also stiffens up the suspension. That's not great because already the car feels pretty firm. So obviously, because it's a big, tall, heavy vehicle, they've had to fit it with some stiff springs to stop it leaning in the bends like a drunk at a bar. The problem with that is that whenever you go over a bump, any bump, you feel it. It comes through to the cabin. I wouldn't say it was harsh, but the car is constantly fidgeting about beneath you. It's almost like you're sat on a washing machine on spin cycle. It does get better when you go on the motorway. It sort of calms down, and it's actually all right to travel on the motorway with this thing. I mean, for something that is about as aerodynamic as Buckingham Palace, you don't really get much wind noise. I mean, that's probably because you've got double glazing. Thing is though, I've just been on the motorway for two hours and cruising at a steady speed, and I'm only returning 18 miles to the gallon. <laughs> Not great, but I suppose if you can afford this car, you don't really care, do you? 
What you will care about is the fact that you do get as standard automatic cruise control so it can keep you a safe distance from the car in front so you can just sit back and relax and enjoy the view from your lofty driving position. The raised driving position is particularly good when you're driving in town because you can even look down on people in Range Rovers. Yes, they may think they're king of the road, but in the G-Class, you are the emperor of the road. And visibility is good all round. So you've got this shallow dash and that combined with the upright windscreen means that you get a great view forward and it helps that you can actually use the little indicators on the wings as sights. And then there's the wheel arches. They mean that you can actually see where the alloys are so you don't curb them when you're trying to park. And there's big glass area, even at the back, you've got a huge rear window. It's partly obscured by that spare wheel, but it's not too bad. And then you've got some safety kit as well. So this car has auto emergency braking to prevent an accident. Though the one in this car seems to keep on seeing accidents that aren't actually about to happen. It keeps pre-tensioning the seatbelt. Another slight problem, I guess, is the fact that yeah, the turning circle in this thing isn't great, but you can always just drive over obstacles. <laughs> now, should you want to, you can actually take this car off-road. I mean, it's a really capable off-roader. You can climb it up hills, crawl it over rocks, and blast it over sand dunes, or, like me, just go for a leisurely drive through the woods. <laughs> I don't know where this is going to take me, actually. I wouldn't get stranded, not because the car can't cope with the terrain. I mean, it will do easily. It's more the fact that I might run out of fuel. It's like driving through Middle Earth, this. So then, what's my verdict on the new G-Class? Well, it's completely different to my normal verdicts. You see, for most people, I would say avoid it because there are better premium SUVs out there. However, if you like it and you want one, just go right ahead and buy it because it's got so much character. And really, while it looks as cool as the old G-Wagon, it's just way, way easier to live with.